tear it falls and hits the ground A tree it falls without a sound Bird it calls and sends you home A man he sits in the cold all along Hi! Hi Taylor! Welcome to the Joy of Flowers. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, please introduce yourself a little bit to everyone and, yeah. um, and then we'll get into it. Okay, um, so my name is Taylor. Um, I am mum to my little boy in heaven, Chase, and my little rainbow baby, Tilly. Um, I have an Instagram page called Chase and Adventure um, where I where my family goes on adventures for our boy. Um, yeah, that's about it. I'm a newly pregnancy loss coach. Um, so, yeah, just trying to do what I can in the baby loss space. Yeah, and and I I could see that you sort of almost started like a like a podcast of sorts, like because you're doing lives and really like talking to just everyday women and and giving them a voice. Um, I've yeah. really loved that that you've done that. Yeah, I um I it just turned in. I was I planned on going live every week just to talk about topics within the lost space that people don't really talk about, but that we need to. Um, I know that I, I was like longing to, to hear about these topics, or, you know, I was scrolling on Instagram and and people kind of just needing that that sort of space to do so. Um, so I thought, okay, I'll just jump on and I had no idea what I was doing, I, completely out of my comfort zone. I thought, well, just, let's just start talking about these topics that we so desperately need to start talking about. And then it's kind of grown from there and I've had, I've even had some experts on and some professionals um, speaking about their expertise and their opinions and then everyday lost mums like myself, um, giving them an opportunity to speak about their babies, um, their stories um, and just unpacking it with them on a, on a 30 to one hour sort of live um and I try and do that every week so and I'm booked out at the moment to like June which is crazy um so yeah just making my way through the people that are just so desperately wanting to talk talk about their story yeah, yeah. no it's amazing how quickly like you you get booked up and you know when you start sort of asking people hey did you did you want to share your story and then they're like yes <laughs> you know with like so yeah. many um, yeah, and and it just like pours out of them, like you know, and it's nerve wracking getting on a live, but I think um, I think it's also amazing to having that ability to to the, the virtual world where we can go live. And I've had nothing but support, you know, majority um, of just support and love, which has been amazing. Yeah, and I think as well because you are like a mum, you're a mum, and you've mm. you've gone through this yourself, and you're you're coming at it from just you know, hey, I'm a mum, I'm you know, I'm just going to do this thing, you know, and I mean, I, I'm kind of with you in that, like, I'm, you know, I'm a mum, I'm doing this thing. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just declaring your love for your babies. That, that, that's all kind of what we're doing. But um, it's just that, unfortunately, when you lose a baby, society does not know how to handle that or deal with it. So I'm hoping that um, by doing my little bit, it sort of opens up conversations for everyday normal people that have not gone through a loss. Um to make them feel a little bit more comfortable hearing about it and, and how to navigate it as well, um, as well as obviously giving lost mums the space to talk about it um, safely. Yeah, definitely. And I think I think you are doing that and I think that's really awesome. So thank you so much <laughs> for what you're doing. Um, thank you. Let's, let's get stuck in. So I want to start from the very beginning. Um, so did you always know you wanted to have kids or was it something that you sort of grew towards? Yeah, look, I I think I always saw kids in my future. Um, so when I met my husband, um, I was 20, he was 30, so there's 10 years difference. And I he wanted kids straight away. And I was like, no, calm down. Um, I want the house. I want a nice car, you know, a decent car. I want savings. I want all these things before we even go there, right? Um, so it was really important for him to get married. He really wanted to get married. It wasn't so wasn't such a priority for me. I it kind of, I'd never really envisioned that, but that's what he wanted. So that's what we did. Um, and then as soon as we got married, which was in 2019, um, we, we started trying for a family. Um, and we knew that we knew that that's what we both wanted. Uh, at that point we had, you know, I had ticked all the things off my list that I thought was right. Um, you know, the, the good job, the house, the car, the savings, all that. Um, and then we kind of just thought, okay, next step babies. Um, 
completely naive and thinking that it was just going to be a smooth sailing process. I kind of in my head was like, okay, I know that some people struggled to conceive. So that was kind of what I thought the hurdle might be. Um, being on the pill majority of my life, um, I thought that was going to be the, the struggle. Um, and it did take about six months. Um, however, I wasn't worried um, at that point. Um, and then when we got the positive pregnancy test, I, I remember it so clearly because it was Melbourne um, COVID lockdown, one of many. And yeah, and I was working from home. Um, my husband actually had the day off and it's weird, but my dog, one of my dogs was being really weird around me. Like he'd just gone really sooky and I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going on. So we, we took a pregnancy test, did not think it was going to be positive, had, had no idea it was going to be positive. Um, would love for it to have been, and I, but I just didn't think it was going to be, and it was. Um, so I was shocked, but ecstatic. Um, and yeah, it was a, it was an amazing moment. I, I remember it forever because we were dancing in the in the lounge room, like we were so excited. Um, we just didn't have any idea um, that our story was going to turn so heartbreakingly devastating. Um, but look, we got twenty six weeks with our boy. Um, and 22 of them were bliss. So, um, yeah, and COVID lockdown, ugh, I don't even know where to begin with that. But you No, know, in Melbourne, yeah. I, I, we were in, we're in Perth. So yeah. when, when all that crazy crap happened in Melbourne, we were just like, well, we're glad we're not there. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so really sorry yeah. because it the rest awful. of Australia used you guys as, as an example of, wow, that's terrible. Like, we're so glad yeah. we're not there. Like, <laughs> Yeah, it was it was insane. Like, I look back now and I'm like, how, why, like, what the hell happened? But, yeah, um, it was it was pretty awful. And I do think it played a negative role in our story in terms of my care. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I try not to be resentful about it, but I am, I am, um, because I honestly do. I don't think it would have changed the outcome in terms of what happened with Chase, but I do think uh, I would have found answers sooner uh, and we wouldn't have probably got to 26 weeks if if we had have known earlier kind of thing. Um, yeah, I mean, so all yeah, the, it's a bit of a, I have never spoken about this actually. Yeah, there may have been like a little bit be like better care, like you said, like because I mean, I went, I was, yeah. I was pregnant in 2020 as well, um, and I went to the hospital a couple of times in the height of the pandemic. It was empty, by the way. Like, I have never seen a hospital so empty in my life, except for during wow. a pandemic. But anyway, so <laughs> I was in the hospital. And it's empty. And I was just like, okay, this is so bizarre. I felt like I was in some weird alternate reality. And um, yeah, you have to go for all this testing before they will even see you. And, you know, I mean, that some of that time is precious time that they could be making sure you're okay. Like, <laughs> I've had yeah, a absolutely say that, like, in that time where they were being stupid about COVID, you know. <laughs> They were they were literally like either losing their baby or something terrible way up like another terrible thing was happening like within their body, you know. Yeah. So it's it's yeah it's definitely a hurdle that um, many women have had to face you know in in the last few years. So you're not alone in yeah. the anger about no, it. No, not at all. And I, that, I guess the word that I use uh, it's probably dramatic, but I felt neglected. Honestly, I felt I felt neglected, and I. I know that a lot of other people feel the same and I just, anyway, I don't know. I don't know why we had to add that layer on top of an already already excruciating time, but we did. So anyway, that's okay. We'll have to just talk about it and hopefully um, heal from it, I suppose. Yeah. So, so, okay. So how did that, how did that play out? Cause you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, I mean, we went through all the scans um, like you would in any normal pregnancy, obviously before we found out that he was sick, um, but a husband had to stay in the car and the, in the parking lot, wasn't allowed to in. So it, that was quite sad. And looking back now under the circumstances, you know, Chase never got to come home. It's even more heartbreaking for my husband that he didn't get those moments that every other kind of family do get to have if COVID wasn't involved. Um, so he was stripped from that, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so 20 week scan, uh, everything seemed normal. Uh, the sonographer said, look, he's not, baby's not getting into a certain position so that I can get the last bit of 
scanning that I need to do. Um, it's all good. Come back in a couple of weeks time and um, hopefully we can get it. I was like, cool. We get to see baby again. Great. Like can't complain. I uh, had no idea anything was wrong at this point. I think there was now that I look back, but no, but they didn't, they didn't make me feel like that at all. Um, and then, so I went back, I was supposed to go back on a, on a third of December, but it was my younger sister's birthday. So I said, well, can I just push it back to the fourth so that I can celebrate my sister's birthday with her? Obviously I didn't know anything was wrong at this point. Um, they said, yeah, no problem. So that was a Friday. I remember it very clearly. It was a Friday afternoon. I was working from home during the day. I said to my husband, um, don't worry about coming. Um, I mean, you can't can't come in anyway, um, and everything's fine. It's just one photo. It, it'll be all right. Anyway, my mum was supposed to be working that day as well, but at last minute she cancelled her, her appointment and she said, I'm coming with you. And I was like, oh, okay, great, no problem. Thank God she did come with me just as a support person um, because in that scan our lives, our lives changed. Um, the sonographer... Uh, performed you know whatever he was doing and then um they go I can't remember if it was a bro girl it was a blur but they go oh look um I'm just going to speak to a manager or like a senior and I'll be back and that's when my heart sank I was like oh my gosh something's wrong and then um yeah they came back and they said um they kind of blew it off like it was nothing they're like oh look something's not right with baby but you're not you're gonna have to go to the hospital to see um whatever team um, but it's Friday, so you're not going to be able to get a hold of them until Monday to make an appointment. Obviously, I'm beside myself. Um, and then their reaction to me being beside myself was, oh, we didn't expect you to get so upset. Yeah. So this was the beginning of the world that I didn't know existed. Um, but I was like, I couldn't even figure out what to say to that because I was like, well, you're telling me that something's wrong with my baby, but you're telling me that I shouldn't be so upset. Uh, anyway, so my mum, thank God, she stepped in and she, she spoke to them for me because I couldn't speak. Um, and, you know, she's like, can we get a little bit more clarity around what you think's wrong? Um, because you're sending her home for the weekend and nobody can nobody's going to help her till Monday. Um, can you let the poor girl out of her misery and give her some indication of what's wrong? Anyway, so they sat down and they said, yeah, see this 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 and this this is all wrong um they just completely they completely um yeah did not care anyway um so anyway that weekend I rang my husband he flew there to be by my side like literally flew from work and um and we sat there on the phone trying to get a hold of somebody or, or some hospital that could help us but they, they said the same thing. There's nobody available over the weekend. You're gonna have to call on Monday. So that's it was a, a excruciating wait over the weekend. Um, and I uh, we don't know how we got through it. It was really 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 tough. Uh, the Monday came, rang the hospital. Um, they said they'll ring us back. Just just completely kind of palming us off. So we actually went to the hospital. We went to two different hospitals and we just tr- turned up there, told them the situation, and they kind of just palmed us off the second hospital we didn't leave we were like we're not leaving but you need to tell us what's happening give us an appointment or something they said look the best we can do is is on Wednesday and they kind of made it look like they kind of made me feel like that was a favor um so they saw me on the Wednesday again excruciating wait um and it kind of just went all downhill from there they did scans and they said no there's there's significant issues but at this point we still were hanging on to hope that we still hadn't thought he was going to die we just thought there was going to be issues significant issues that we could overcome potentially uh but that wasn't to be so the next thing that happened is they pulled us into a room a a medical um a doctor and somebody else um and they said look they basically said in in one way shape or form that our son wasn't going to make it they can't tell us why because they don't they've never seen anything like it before and um, they gave us a few options on what we can do for testing, uh, but the outcome would be he was not going to live. Um, so they their recommendation in without saying it, they can't they can't actually say it, but one way or another they were saying that um, they believe that terminating our pregnancy was the best solution for our son because he was not going to make it. So at that point, I didn't even know what that meant. Like, I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't even know that was, I didn't know what she was, I didn't know what they were saying to me. Like, I was just staring at them as I was speaking and and trying to figure out what had actually come out of her mouth because it came out so casually, like it was not a big deal. And then um, I looked at my husband and 
like in complete shock and we've asked them to repeat what they just said because we didn't actually fathom it um and yeah they just said that uh that he wasn't going to make it and they thought that terminating our pregnancy was the um best case scenario to sort of prolong the suffering um, they didn't think he was going to make to full term. And if he did make full term, he would die shortly after birth and suffer potentially um, if he did survive it. So, yeah, that was kind of the next avenue. And then the next few weeks we just had to get more tests done and um, we had to get a board to approve approve our scenario. Like basically a, a board of medical professionals had to review the case and make sure that um, what they were saying was the best way forward for for him. Uh, and obviously, getting that news, you and your partner could potentially be on very different uh, pages. But my husband and I, we were, we were pretty much on the same page. Like we didn't want our boy to suffer. If he had no, if he had no chance, and they were adamant that he had no chance, we were on the same page about that. And um, but the way that they, the doctor said it, they're like. It's not funny at all. I don't know why I'm laughing. But they, the way that they said it was like they kind of wanted us to come up with a decision right there in that, in that room. And I said, oh, look, this is too much for me. I need to go think about this. I need to ring my mum. Um, I need to talk to my husband. And then she, she was like, go get a coffee and talk about it. Coffee? Are you kidding? You think I can get anything into my digestive system right now? No, it's, I can't take a coffee coffee like it's a chit chat um anyway and just, then, um, just casually have a conversation about you know ending your baby's life you know just just right. casual like it's a it's just a pregnancy termination like it sounds mm. so much nicer than oh. the actual like what it is it's like yeah oh like, no I couldn't believe it and then that was like yeah it just went from there it did, awful awful I mean I look the care itself was um okay but under the circumstances, but the 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 lack of um, empathy that these professionals have because they deal with it obviously all the time is just mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. And I, I'd never even heard of what they were telling me was was the best case scenario, so I, I couldn't understand how they didn't understand that I didn't know what they were talking about. Like it was like as if that I knew, and I'm like I don't know what you're saying. Um. And I, asked, I had to ask them, I was like, look, how common is this? Because I've never heard of this. And then they've said, look, put it this way, there's another couple in the room next to you right now that are being given the same news. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. And I was like, okay, why did I not know about this? Because I feel I'm a very, um, I, I, I'm going to say negative kind of person. Like I'll plan for every worst case scenario, right? That's just how I am. I've always been like that. Every scenario, I've got a plan for it in my mind. I did not have a plan for this. I didn't even, I didn't even consider this. You know, even when I was told that our boy was sick, I still, this not was not on the cards for me. I just thought that we were going to have a hard time, you know, but he was going to be okay. Did not think that I was going to have to end my pregnancy because he was not going to make it. Not in a million years. So I guess that's part of my mission is not to scare women or, or, or families or, you know, partners. Not, it's not my, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to make them aware, educate them that it's a possibility when you do start or grow your family that things go wrong and you might be faced with a decision like this. Hopefully not. God forbid that that happens. But it, it is possible um, because I was so blindsided by this, completely blindsided. And that wasn't a good feeling on top of being given that news. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, and you're right. It, they're very blase about it. Like, I mean, mm. I I um had a misdiagnosis at one point with um one of my pregnancies, um, and they said my my child had Edward syndrome, and they gave me a sheet that explained what Edward syndrome was, and they just said, yeah, you know, um, you know, come, this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Here's the, here's the sheet of paper that explains what this thing is that I've just said that you have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, go home, you know, and come back in a couple of weeks and we'll do a scan, you know, we'll book you in for an ultrasound. And you're just like, okay. So then I was going home and I was like, okay, well, what is it? And I'm reading this sheet and it's, it's all written in medical terminology. So Mm -hmm. obviously that's not helpful. So you're reading it and you're just like, I have no idea. Like, this is more complicated. This is more confusing. So then you Google 
you google and then you go down a rabbit hole yeah and then you're like oh my gosh I'm so broken Mm -hmm. I'm so miserable right now that was my first taste of something horrible with pregnancy but even then it because it did turn out to be fine it didn't wake me up Mm -hmm. you know it didn't truly wake me up and I think it's until you go through something I think it's really hard to understand um you know what can happen like losing losing baby it really is a wake-up call and it's one that I don't think anyone can truly understand unless they've actually experienced it you know going through fear is one thing but going through loss is completely different yeah yeah that's right um so yeah yeah it changed me to my very core um yeah, when you think you're going to start or grow a family, this is not what you envision. Uh, and then adding the the shame and the stigma of, you know, terminating your pregnancy um, for medical reasons is just another ball ballgame. Um, how, how was that? Because I know, I know there is a lot of women who say they have a lot of, um, like, guilt and shame over yeah. um, choosing to terminate. Um, yeah. Well, the, way, the way I see it, though, it wasn't really a choice. Um, I know that that's the lack of better words is to say that it's a choice, but it's not really because regardless, your, your baby's going to die, right? You're, you're giving, you've been given the news that it's either life limiting or, um, or not compatible with life. So at one point your baby is going to die and it's going to be, it's going to, it's the, they're, they're going to be suffering. So for us, it was a matter of whether we prolong the suffering out of selfishness and hope that, and hope that, we get some time with the baby, with our baby, or whether we avoid the suffering altogether, whatever that may look like or for however long that may be, and send him off as graciously as we can, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, it wasn't it wasn't gracious, but it was better than the alternative. The way we see it is that it was the lesser of two evils. Yeah. And that's how I've come well, that's how I've come to some sort of peace about it and I know it was the right decision um decision for us because or for our baby because when it happened I, I'm the type of person to have, to have a conscience about everything like if I say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing I've got a conscience for it it eats me alive like I, I won't sleep over the simplest things when I left that hospital that day when we did the termination I had this wave of like it was like a thank you like it was like a thank you mum kind of thing like it it just come like come across me and I walked to the car I'm gonna get sad I'm gonna cry I walked to the car and I was like I know we did the right thing so that told me everything and that's what I hang on to I have moments of of um guilt but watching him struggle to breathe or eat he couldn't he couldn't swallow he couldn't he wasn't able to swallow so watching him struggle to just to breathe for me and for his dad would have made me feel more guilty yeah so that's how I came to the decision that's how we came to the decision um I know other families will have their own situations and I know that you know some people do choose to hang on and that's no judgment there but whatever whatever they need to do but for me I couldn't I couldn't um live with myself if I had of um brought him into the world out of my own pure not wanting to let him go and watch him suffer if he was to survive yeah so that's why we did what we did um wish I wish it was different I, I obviously wish that we didn't have that that as our fate but that that's what it was and um yeah I um I thank him every day for making me a mum. Um, so obviously after losing him, we um what we did was um we ended up taking off off on a um East Coast Australia trip. We bought a camper trailer and we decided I couldn't be in the house. You know the nursery was ready. We were expecting to come home with a baby. He wasn't. He was coming home. So um. We actually had him, he was born on Christmas Eve. So we came home on Christmas Day without him, which was absolutely awful. And uh, 
I said to my husband, I can't stay here. Like, I can't be in this house. So we bought a camp trailer, which was amazing because at that point, it, like, you couldn't get a camper trailer or a caravan at that point because of COVID, all the, all the um, issues with logistics and all that sort of stuff. We couldn't. But we told, uh, we went to a, a specific manufacturer and we told them the story and they shuffled their list and they got us on the top of the list and we bought a brand new camper trailer within a week. Like it was, we had it in a few weeks. It was there. And on the 1st of February, we took off on an East Coast trip and uh, we just needed to get out. We took the dogs, we just left. And we had no idea what we were doing. We had no plans. We had no, absolutely no idea what we were doing. We were just going with the flow. And uh we didn't even have an end date in mind. Our Both our um, employers were really good about it. They just said, you know, go do what you got to do. And thankfully, and I was on maternity leave. I was getting paid as well. So we had an income. And, yeah, we just took off and we had the our most amazing trip and we'd write his name and at each beach we'd go to, we'd write his name, we'd take photos. And it was amazing. It was really good for the soul because it was a trip that we'd always wanted to go on. But, we, you know, life gets in the way. You just never do it. But we did it and we did it for him. We called the trip Chase and Adventure, hence our Instagram page. Uh, and our following, I didn't even have social media before Chase died and our social media just blew up. Like people were like, oh, my God, what you're doing is amazing. It just went nuts. And um, we had plans on getting to the tip of Australia, but we found out, I don't know, two or th- two months into our trip that we were pregnant with little baby Tilly um, and oh god that was unexpected but the most, biggest blessing ever um, so we decided to cut the trip short and come home so that we were with the hospital that delivered Chase and um, yeah and they treated they they were amazing um, but I think I drove them insane because I just needed reassurance every day <laughs> that everything was okay and they're like Taylor gosh yes everything is fine <laughs> yes like, but I don't believe you <laughs> someone said to me oh you know uh, uh, pregnancy after loss right is terrible um but they said you know it'd be so awesome if we could go to like a resort and we're like in it like tapped into a machine and oh. <laughs> monitors the baby and us and like <laughs> we're just like gives us a thumbs up <laughs> easy you know sunbathing and doing all the healthy things and someone's oh, like would be us, you know I was like yeah that would be amazing I'd love that that's a great idea maybe that's like a, a rich person's uh concept they can they can create like a resort for like pregnancy after lost women they'd make a killing yeah anyone if you if anyone <laughs> who's very rich is watching right now please yeah <laughs> great investment great investment <laughs> right, I love that because you literally drive yourself insane for nine months like I yeah. was, I mean, look, I think I handled it decently, but I still was crazy. I was in absolutely no case because I was just so terrified of it happening again. Yeah. Um, because what happened with Chase is he had a, a rare gene mutation, um, which resulted in Costello syndrome. Uh, it's a very rare um, genetic issue, but it wasn't hereditary. It was a, a gene um, mutation. So something within him just changed. And they don't know why. Um, And there was a very little chance of it happening again, but that didn't comfort me at all Um, because obviously we fell pregnant unexpectedly from when we lost Chase to when we had Tilly and we thought, oh, my God, what have we done? We felt very irresponsible. Um, And I thought, what have we done? We're going through this all again. Obviously that didn't happen. She's perfectly fine. But uh, it didn't matter what they said. I was so convinced because they just kept saying it was unlucky it was like being hit by lightning with what happened to chase and I'm like that's not comforting no no we're not all. one of my speakers she said you know they kept telling me you know it's so rare it's like one in you know a one percent thing and she's just like how is that helpful and I was like exactly <laughs> like so, someone's going to you're so unique like you're yeah. so unique case like you know because then you're thinking yeah. Oh my gosh, if this can happen to me, like what else? Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. 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 And I just went through the whole process of there's something wrong with me. I'm a freak. There's something wrong with me. You know, my baby's sick because of me or because of my husband. Like then there was the whole blame thing. Like, was it you? Was it me? Like, I don't know. Um, but our baby's gone and like I'm angry and I'm I'm, you know, just everything. Um, so we had all the tests done and like everyone kept saying, No, everything's fine. I'm like, well, everything's not fine. So what like what is it? 
Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we found out, I mean, we, got, we had an autopsy done, which that was hard, but um, they came back saying, yeah, it was Costello syndrome. And I Googled it and the statistics are insanely, like, they're not, it's not a common thing. I don't think there's many in Australia. There's like, I think less than maybe 20. Yeah. Um, the, la- the last statistic that I could find, which was a few years ago, I, I can't get a, a like an updated one. I've asked, but I can't get one. Um, so it's very similar to, I think, another 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 mum messaged me and said it's very similar to another syndrome it might even be Edward syndrome that you mentioned but I can't remember so don't quote me on that but it was very similar to another syndrome yeah the, I, know, I know Edwards was very rare as well that's just like where you don't have a face um okay no that wasn't it things that could be missing as well but it's really it is it's it's it just it's so shocking mm-hmm. because you just don't you know think that because obviously we're taught that you know you put the two things together and baby the baby yeah just it just gets made you know yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just then you have a baby and then you've got a screaming baby and then you don't get any sleep but that's what people tell you yeah and like there's so many steps missing so yeah. many so yeah. many um I'm, I'm i'm glad you got answers though yeah like, i think like to just to just lose and not know is mm. really awful like oh yeah and there's so many so many families that have that that don't know like I did a poll not long ago only the other day and I was like diagnosis question mark and I'm, I put there like I know that not everybody does so like I feel for you but like if you know let me know because I'd love to know all these different types of ways like I'm just curious yeah and a lot of people said no no we don't know and they did tell me that the doctors, they did say it, there's a very high chance that you might not get answers. And so my brain kind of had to wrap around the fact that we weren't going to get answers. Like I had to convince myself we weren't so that if we did, it was kind of like a, a bonus. bonus. Yeah. For lack of a better word. Um, and yeah, I remember getting the call and they told me, but again, they said it so casually. And I'm like, can you tell me a little bit more about this Costello syndrome but they can't they couldn't really tell me much about it because they they had never seen it before in their hospital so anyway a couple of months later I started a blog and everything and just none of it made sense for the first few months because I was just a mess but from doing that um which is crazy by the way because I'm such a private person that for me to write a blog is insane Um, but a few months later, I had a mum from New South Wales who messaged me and she, she was going through the process of losing her baby termination for medical reasons. And she knew that it was Costello syndrome before the baby died. And I don't know whether it had anything to do with, with Chase and our story, but she got answers much quicker than what I did. So I'm hoping that my, our case study had made it to her hospital because I'm guessing they all work together to get answers. So I think, I think some of them will like they'll they'll ring around. Like I've heard that that's something yeah. that the, the experts and things will do. Like they'll ring around and be like, "Hey, have you heard of this? Like, have you seen mm. them? Because yeah, different experts will know different things. You know, that's and right. Not need to get answers. Yeah. Hopefully, they want to. You know, yeah. Ho- hopefully, they're doing the work to do that. But I think that's what happened. I don't know for sure. I'll, I'll never know. But she contacted me. And she was going through the process, and I kind of held her hand virtually through that. But I just couldn't believe that she, because when I Googled it, obviously, um, when I found out, I couldn't find anybody in Australia. No way. It was all overseas. And even then, that was very, very, there wasn't very much. So when she found me, I was just so grateful that she found me because whatever I was doing in whatever state that I was in was had worked because somebody could cling, so I had somebody there that they could cling on to me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that was actually quite therapeutic in itself for me. Um, knowing that she didn't have to go through that completely alone. Um, and I remember messaging her the day that she had the, the termination and the day after, and again, COVID, she couldn't have a partner there. And, um, you know, we we're just messaging and um, I was crying with her and, you know, she was going through it all. It was just, it was beautifully awful, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I was speaking to a lady the other day and I said, you know, it, there is there is beauty in the awfulness. Mm-hmm. Like it's horrible, but there is actually some beauty in there, and yeah, it it gets you, you know, mm-hmm. and it and it gets to your heart. It really does. Um, yeah. Changes you for sure. Oh yeah, I spoke to a lady yesterday, and she was saying that um, 
she chose to keep her baby full term and give birth um and it was she knew she knew it what the baby wasn't going to make it and um basically it had like organs missing um and when her baby was born she had even more missing than they thought that she had yeah. but she had some time with her alive like in that That's moment beautiful. Yeah. but she said she said like she's glad that you know she she did that but at the same time she doesn't feel like she could ever do that again like if no, she knew yeah. something like that was going to happen because she, mm. she said it was excruciating being pregnant and carrying mm. you know so I think we all have to make those decisions for ourselves and, yeah. and, you know, for our families, you know, if you've, if you've got other children, you know, and you can't, like you can't necessarily put them through that because you're going through that too. And you can't be there in the way that they need you. If you're mm. going through that necessarily, you know, yeah. and props to anyone who can <laughs> like emotionally yeah. be there and, and manage that. Um, but yeah, you know, we have to do the things that we feel are right for our our families. Um, yeah, I love that you put that feeling at the end, like uh, that. That that's so beautiful, and it yeah mm-hmm. made me cry. <laughs> made me want to cry. Yeah, it it, it was such a um, profound moment in my journey because you know I was obviously riddled with the decision: do we do it? Do we don't do it? What do we do? And um, to get that overwhelming sense of like it was like I walked out of the hospital. So so what, what happened with my situation was they were going to um, make us wait until after Christmas to have the termination, So which was just mind-blowing. Um, but once I had co- overcome the shock of that, I, de- I decided, okay, I've got X amount of weeks with Bub. He's going to continue to grow. Um, it was scary because in such a short amount of time he had de- deteriorated so much, so I wasn't sure what was going to happen, whether he was going to die in that in that time frame I didn't I didn't know but I thought okay we've got x amount of weeks let's just enjoy it we'll go do beautiful things with him you know make memories sing get uh, Santa photos done all that sort of stuff and you know spend this time with him and then they rang and they're like oh no the hospital rang like no we're gonna do it sooner can you come in next week it was like oh my gosh like what the hell I just accepted the fact that we're going to be pregnant until the new year or till after Christmas because everyone's going on holidays um and you know we'd cancelled our annual trip all that sort of stuff and now now you're telling me that it's happening sooner but that they gave us the decision and we said no look we'll just do it because there's no point prolonging it so we did we we went in so what happened with us we had to I don't know if you want to go into details or not yeah um I, I was going to ask you anyway like how how did the process work like did you end up being able to hold him or anything like that like because obviously I I haven't experienced it and I don't I don't know how many people are watching who have experienced um you know a, a sort of termination in that respect um I know uh, uh, quite a few of our speakers have um done the uh that the, they get the injection and it brings on labor and then they have the baby the baby's not alive sometimes sometimes it is so um yeah that's kind of more of the case that we've had so far so you're you're kind of more unique in that sense for this particular event so yeah if you if you feel comfortable yeah so it, it was very similar to what you just said so we we we, we went in we got the injection I, Obviously, I was begging with them that there was another alternative. I was, you know, please tell me that this, that you just stuffed, stuff, we've stuffed it up and he's fine. Like, tell me that you're wrong. And I remember, I remember the midwife that was there. She walked me through the whole process. I remember she even was around when I had Tilly. Um, and I, the words that they were saying to me, they were so beautiful. Like, they were telling me that, we'll, you know, we're definitely doing the right thing for him and, and all that. It was really, really the most worst day of my life. Um, I couldn't watch. My, my husband did. Mark. I watched him. I put the um needle in my belly. And he died. Um, and then 
we filled out some paperwork and we were sent on our way home for two days. I had to wait for it, it all to kick in and for my body to think that I was going into labour. So we went home and I um I stayed in bed for two days. I didn't move. My husband had to get me up to take me to the toilet and feed me. But I just wanted to die. Um, knowing that your baby is, is inside you but he's not alive because you've had to do something. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. How do I um, explain it? It was honestly the worst. I don't think it gets any worse than that. Um, yeah, and I found strength within me that I didn't know I had. And I wish I didn't have to find, but I did. I heard the neighbor's kids playing over those two days and I was, I was happy for them and I was happy. I got a newfound appreciation for the fact that children, you know, happy, happy, happy children, happy families. I have a new appreciation for that. Yeah. But um, it was really awful. And we had to pack our bags and two days later we had to go into the hospital and start labour um, and deliver our boy. Um, and I'll never forget the midwife, one of the midwives, the head midwife of that hospital. She was, be- she was a beautiful lady, um, such a loving, warming woman that I, I, I had a connection with. But I'll never forget what she said to me. It's it's haunted me forever because I don't think she realised the impact of her words. So she sees this thing every day. She sees these things every single day or every few days or whatever. She's experienced in her field. And she said, you know, I'm just really sorry this has happened. You've made the right decision. She, she believed I've made the right decision. But just don't tell anyone. Because no one will understand. And that sentence rocked me to my very core because I couldn't undo what had just happened. It was done. My son was about to be born into the world silently. And she planted that seed in my head that it was shameful. I didn't. I didn't know that it was shameful until she said that. And then that was when I realised that things have to change because the way I saw it was I was going through the biggest tragedy of my life. You know, I've just lost my boy, my son, my firstborn. I did the best thing that I could for him that they told me was the best thing to do for him, followed by don't tell anyone. That's so awful. I can't believe she said that to you. It was honestly, I, I, I was in shock. I, I don't know if she realized how she lit a fire in my belly when she said that. I don't, I don't, I know that wasn't her intention, but she did because I thought I could have easily have turned away from that and gone, okay, I better not tell anybody. I'll be, I'll keep this a secret for the rest of my life because she told me to, and she knows best. This is her profession. But it just felt so wrong. I I wanted to tell everyone. I wanted to tell everyone that my son was born. And the way that he was born into this world and the way he died was tragic. But he was so loved and so wanted. And if I could have changed the situation, I would have 100%. Like, I asked them to take me instead. Like, take me, just keep leave, leave my son alone. If, if we could have traded places, there is no doubt in this world that that would have happened. But it, it didn't ha- It couldn't happen like that. No, I had to, I said that to the lady I was speaking to the other day. It's like, you know, it's not, it's not an exchange, unfortunately. You know, we, um, yeah. 
you know, if it was an exchange, we would choose differently, but. Oh, 100%. It would be a completely different story. You know, he'd be here and I wouldn't be. 100% easy. Like, that's what you do as a mum. Like, of course, you'd do anything to keep your kids safe. And it was no different in this situation. I was doing what I could to keep him as safe as I could. And that was to keep him, you know, keep him away from pain and suffering. Because all he knew, all he knew was love and warmth and me. And, you know, from what I can gather, he wasn't in any pain or suffering. Yeah. That's what they tell me. Um, and I wanted to keep it that way. Um, especially because he had no chance of, of a life, of a good life, of a life at all. So, um, yeah, when she said that, it just lit something in me and I thought, you know what, I'm going to do the absolute opposite of that because that is the worst advice I have ever received and you should be, you should be, sh- you should feel shame that you said it. Um, so I don't, I don't know, I never saw, she she rang me a couple of weeks later and to check in on me. And I was nice and stuff. I didn't, I, w- I, never, I never said anything to her about it, but I just thought to myself, I wonder how many people you've affected by saying that because you really affected me. You changed the course of my life. You know, I decided I was going to be public about it from that from that point. Um, and I don't hide it. I mean, I say, if someone asks, I say, I, I lost my boy. He was born stillborn because he was. Yeah. If I feel like I need to go into it, I will. I'll say followed, you know, he was stillborn followed by a termination for medical reasons. But I'd i not I don't hide it. So yeah. I think but, I think it's it's amazing to me, you know, um, as mothers, we we do, we we are there to protect our kids and that's our job. That's a big part of our job. <laughs> and I mean, whatever, whatever that is for you. That you know that I don't understand how people can be so cruel. Mm, I don't think she thought she was being cruel. That's the that's the scary part. I don't actually think. No, she, she said probably, it. She probably thought she was protecting you. Yeah, yeah, and that's when I realized that it's actually society, the way that our language is, and the way that we. Yeah, so that's why it's my mission to just talk about termination for medical reasons, put a face behind it as well. Like, you know, I was twenty six years old and I became a bereaved mum. A, a, you know, I had to terminate my pregnancy for medical reasons at 26 years old. Like, you know, so I just want people to know that it that it's unfortunately a a realistic part of a realistic um, potential outcome when you grow or start your family. Like, and it sucks. It's devastating and it's I hope I hope that it that no one ever has to face that decision but it does happen oh yeah and and I just want it to be talked about and 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 raise awareness around it because yeah I didn't I didn't know anyone and then as soon as I opened up about it I I so many people opened up about their their stories that I would never have probably otherwise known um I found out that a family friend like my one of my best my best friend her um a family friend of within a family I've known her forever um she had gone through it recently like a few years or maybe a year or so before I did and I didn't know I just thought she was living the family life you know she had beautiful family beautiful kids I had no idea so and then like in the in my street I've had like not the same situation but I've had like three different neighbors that have lost babies throughout their lifetime that I would never have known otherwise um yeah so yeah whatever I'm trying to do which I have no idea what I'm doing but whatever it, I'm doing it's I'm learning a lot and um and it's so like in my head stillbirth you lose babies years ago from complications and not having the right medical treatment or um care in no way in my mind did I think that was going to happen to me in this day and age yeah you know? I think that's the that's like the little thing like the cherry on top like it yeah. doesn't happen anymore right because we're so advanced and yeah yeah and the fact that they looked at me and they said there's nothing we can do for him I was gobsmacked I'm like what do you mean like you take organs out of people and put them in other people like you know what what why can't you fix him like he had you know there was he had a enlarged liver he had heart defect like the his liver was um had um in, enlarged so much that it, it deviated his heart axles so he had liver problems he had um heart problems he wasn't swallowing he had, had some fluid in the back of his neck 
Um, it was a range of things that he had. And I'm and in my head, I'm like, yeah, but you can fix that. You can fix that. You can fix that. You can fix that. And like, yeah, we can fix this and we can fix this. We can't fix them all. You know what I mean? Like they can fix it. One. Yeah, if they had if he had one, they could have probably fixed that, but they but they couldn't fix them all. He it, it was it, it wasn't gonna happen. Um but in my head I didn't understand that because I assumed that they would be able to just fix him. But no, they couldn't. And that's kind of what also shocked me was that, you know, you, we believe that we live in a society that's so advanced and, and I mean, they are, and, but not advanced enough to save our boy okay. and a lot of other babies. Yeah, so, uh, and oh, just so many. It's just, I mean, when, when this world gets opened up to you, you do, you go through this big shock and the more you learn, it's just, you know, yeah. Like I didn't know half of the stuff that exists, exists. And... yeah me too me too and I guess that's I guess that's why we do what we what we do is to um talk about it yeah. and again not to scare anybody or to give anyone more anxiety than they already have but just education I mean I feel like I was just so angry that nobody had let me know that this is a possibility like even it stems down from school uh, education like I don't they never spoke about this in health class or in sex education like I didn't I just assumed you'd have you'd have sex and you have a baby potentially have a baby like you know I didn't know that all these possibilities I mean I knew miscarriage I knew that was common um you know infertility I knew that was common but I did not know to the extent that what I know now and I think that that's society letting us down definitely Definitely. And, and, you know, even, I mean, sometimes I I get really angry with education. <laughs> like, yeah, me too. <laughs> the lack. Yeah. Um, it, it really, it, it's so harsh, you know, the, the, the reality when it hits you and it's because you weren't prepared, you weren't educated in that, um, you know, and I get like it's horrible and confronting and people don't want to talk about it. But, I mean, we talk about like car crashes and, we talk about like drug addicts and stuff like that. And I remember learning about those things when I was in school and like being terrified to drive and like, I couldn't drive a car. Like I've only recently been driving, you know? Mm. So it's, yeah, you know, and that's just around a farm, not on a road. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, it, you yeah. Know, I don't understand why they don't. Yeah. No. There's worse yeah. things to yeah, absolutely. And that's, I think, as you said, it's just the fear. I think society have this fear of it because it's confronting and that it's uncomfortable and that, you know, nobody wants to talk about babies dying and, you know, mothers grieving or fathers grieving. Like, it's too hard. I get it. But um, but the only way that we're, it's going to get better is if we talk about it. The only way that we're going to feel more comfortable talking about it and, and bringing it up is by talking about it and learning about it. And um, like anything, like anything, any other topic you can think of, the only way that we're going to get more comfortable with it is by dealing with it and talking about it. So, yeah, it sucks. Like I I get quite um, resentful at the fact that this is my life. Like I get on, I get online and I talk about sad stuff, like grief. I miss my baby. I get angry that we all miss our babies. I get angry that all our babies die. Like I get angry um, and I wish that I could do the whole well, I was beautiful with rainbows and unicorns and I wish I could do that, but, you know, it doesn't happen. Like it's, it, that's not, that's not reality for me. I mean, I have got joyful side to my life. I've got my beautiful daughter who's amazing. And I do believe Chase sent me, sent me her in, in some way, shape or form. Um, but there's still a big hole in my heart that will never be, never, ever, no matter how many kids I have, nothing will, repl- nothing will fill that hole that I have for him um and what he's left so yeah and I get yeah there's so many topics we could talk about like you know when people ask how many kids do you have and how do you answer it and you know all that but I just my best thing that I could say is I just go with however I feel at that point in time you know yeah. most of the time I'll say I have two one in heaven one here or um my son's my son passed away or I, it just depends on how I feel at the time but yeah that's a whole other topic, I guess. Yeah, I always say three because I have three living children. Um, but I always feel guilty. Yeah. About the other two. Because I'm like, mm. but you know, I don't even mention that they existed, you know, yeah. and I feel guilty. It's ridiculous. Yeah. How many I, do you have? Like, 
you could see as do you have on earth <laughs> you know rather than yeah. do you have as in like everywhere <laughs> yeah <laughs> on earth yes <laughs> I have three on earth <laughs> yeah <laughs> well you know someone told me that um when you do answer those questions and you feel guilty with your answer um something to remember is that I don't know if you've heard this but um not everyone you meet deserves to know your story oh that's that's different no I haven't heard that not everyone yeah yeah and that's what makes me feel so much better when I answer the question and I'm not happy with my answer if I feel guilty I think okay not everybody deserves to know my story and that person obviously in that moment didn't deserve it because it didn't come out of my mouth Hmm. either that or they're not ready they're not ready to hear that story yet maybe that story those kinds of stories are going to impact them at a different time yeah yeah that's interesting like maybe Hmm. It's not the timing for them. That's cool. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. It's a bit of a perspective shift and that helps me. So Yeah, we need that, you know. Yeah. We need those perspective shifts because otherwise we get really locked into those like horrible yeah. spiral. And like you said, like getting into the kind of, oh, I'm so depressed. Like I miss my yeah. I wish I had them. And yeah. yeah, it just it becomes one of those things that just eats you. Um yes. yeah. before we go, um what what was it like um, being pregnant with with your rainbow? Yeah, I don't feel like I took a breath the entire time. Um, yeah, it was pretty excruciating. But the only the things that I did to keep myself sane were um, I did fortnightly scanning. Like even if the hospital, because the hospital got sick of me at one point, they're like, "No, like you don't need any more scans." So I, um, they were great, but they weren't. They didn't give me everything <laughs> I wanted, which is fair enough. Um, so I did private scans uh, every fortnight. I'd go to like a, like a um, 4G or five, like a five, not five, five, is it five, four or five, um, whatever it's called, 5D, 5, 5D or 4D scan um, and could actually see baby and what she was doing and um, and she was so active flipping around and everything. And then that would just get me through to whatever my next appointment was, which were quite regular um, because I had like a, a team because of my situation. They oh, gave yeah. me a team within you the hospital. High risk? Um, they never called it that, but I guess that's what it was. Um, and I got to see like a regular midwife um, and like to do um, tests and obs on me because with Chase, they never, ever, ever checked me because of COVID. I never even got checked at all. Like it was everything was over the phone. They never measured my belly. They never even weighed me, like nothing. And I honestly think if they had of them, they probably would have found that because he was quite large, Chase. I think they would have found something a lot sooner. Um. Anyway, yeah, so that's what I did. I just did regular scans. Um. I journaled a lot. I know that sounds cliche, but I did. I journaled and that really helped me Um. just get everything out from here onto page. And it also saved my husband's sanity because he was sick of repeating himself a million times. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, this again. Yeah, we've been through this. <laughs> I need to go through it again. <laughs> No, aren't you okay with like what's going on no I've already told you it's horrible I'm freaking out yeah don't ask me yeah so but then I'm like don't ask me but ask me yeah um, <laughs> um so yeah poor thing I was driving him insane um uh but yeah when we had her oh my god it was just the best thing ever so bittersweet but beautiful and um now I just can't imagine that's the thing I can't imagine life without her but if she wasn't here, if you know what I mean? Like if Chase was here, she wouldn't be here. And if she was here, he, you know what I mean? He's not here. So it's so hard to be, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet. But she's great. Love her. She's, I feel like she's been here before. She just got like an old soul. Um, Yeah, cheeky little girl. And um, I thank Chase every day for her. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it is it is tough like when you, you yeah, have that other baby and you're like well the other one wouldn't be here like if Mm. if I uh, like if I'd had that one she wouldn't be here you know vice versa um it is quite a tricky thing like I'm I'm pregnant now Uh, oh congratulations thank you I'm 20 26 weeks I think okay yeah 26 so you know Uh as usual freaking out um (laughs) but my my daughter said to me you know hey uh I wish I wish the other babies were born. I wish we had the other babies. And I said to her, well, 
they all fit into one pregnancy time time spare um, because we lost them uh, one of them would have been born in December last year and um, the other one would be born in May and this one's due in June and I said so if we if we had have had one of them then we would be having grace and um, she was like oh, oh oh okay and she was like well I want grace and I was like I know you do I was like, so we couldn't have the other two, but we can love them, you know. Oh, that's beautiful. And she was just like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, God bless. Oh, it's so it is really hard. But mm. but yeah, there is I think that actually does make me feel a bit better because I'm like, well, you know, I wouldn't be having this baby and I can't I can't like I wouldn't wish her away or anything like that. No. You know, it's like that's it, yeah. I have to accept the other two, you know, didn't make it so that she could be here. And yeah. I suppose that was the same for you, you know, accepting yeah. that she wasn't here so that you could have Tilly. So, yeah, yeah, I always say that Chase sacrificed himself for her. That's that's how I, I feel because, as I said, I got that relief, that, that sense of relief when I when we left the hospital and I feel like that was him saying, thanks, Mum, like, I got this, we're okay. And then, yeah, having Tilly not unexpectedly not long later, yeah, I feel like all signs point to um, his sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. Was there um was there like a brief moment when you found out you were pregnant that you were like, this is going to be born? Yeah, I I, I did. I did tell myself um, that. Yeah, I just kind of knew that she was going to be born because I I thought in my head, this can't happen again. Like, there's no way anyone would. It could, could for this to happen again like there's there's the worst has happened I've lost one baby this is not going to happen again yeah um but I know it does like I know people do lose I know I've just had a friend not long ago lose another baby and it's I just can't I have no words like I don't know I don't know what to say like that's just absolutely awful um to lose one baby let alone two I just yeah um but and in my head what got me through having Tilly was that I don't know. I was just like, the worst has happened. It can't happen again. And I've got nothing else to lose. Like I've already lost the worst thing because I didn't have any other living children. Um, I've already lost everything that I could possibly, possibly lose. So if it was to happen again, it was kind of like, that's it. I'd be done. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't have even tried again kind of thing. So it was kind of like now or never in, yeah. in the way that I thought of it. Um, so yeah, I just had that hope that we were going to get through it yeah. I don't know and you had I mean it sounds like you had your mindset so you this was this was going to be it this was going to be the last pregnancy if it didn't turn out you know with a baby living yeah yeah I wouldn't have gone through, I wouldn't have I don't think I would have physically been able to do it again or mentally um so I kind of was like yeah now or never um there was not never going to be a good time to have another baby after losing chase like there was never going to be a time where I was about yeah I'm ready um so you know it was kind of like okay it's happened it's happened it's just kind of happened for us which is scary but great um let's just see what happens and yeah if she hadn't have made it I don't think I would have made it if that makes sense mentally yeah, yeah. and that's fair like I you know I had I had two losses they were early uh, like earlier pregnancy losses but um I said to my husband I was like if we get pregnant again and we lose again, I'm not doing it again. Mm. Like I'm done. This is yeah. it. You know, if we lose, if we lose her, like I'm done. Yeah. And it's um, funny. It's, 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 everyone's got their point, like their, like what they can tolerate, I guess, not tolerate, but deal with. Yeah. Um, and that was yours. And yeah, mine was, yeah. If Tilly didn't make it, I wasn't even like, I'm, we, we, we want to have another baby and I'm probably more terrified now because I have Tilly she's alive she's here she relies on me yeah what is so that I've been told yeah. by so many women that the second so yeah so the rainbow baby is great like the like freaking out okay but then you're even more terrified yeah yeah I'm I'm constantly thinking do I want to go again like do I want to risk our life and our, our where we are if it happens again touch wood mm. um having to deal with all that again with a whilst parenting um who ne she needs me she relies on me she's only one and a half not even 
um, to go again? Like, am I am I really willing to do that, or am I happy just to have Tilly here, alive, healthy, happy, and we're okay? Like, that's constantly what I'm thinking about. I'm con- I'm like, my husband, you know, it's easy for him to say. He's like, yeah, we're going again. I'm like, yeah, you don't have to carry all. You know, you don't, your body, like, I've only just got my body back, you know, and and mentally and oh, all the things. And I was also on antidepressants when I was pregnant with Tilly, which dramatically, the pregnancy phase, but it dramatically helped me get through that. Um, I'm off them now and I have been for a long time, but I'm like, I don't want to go back into that world of, you know, that anxiety, that stress, the depression. I don't, I'm scared. I mean, I want another baby, but I want them here now. I don't want to have to go through all that. Yeah, because look, it is. It, you're reliving the trauma. You're you're in the trauma. You're living it. So it it you you have to understand that. Yeah, you're going back into that mindset and you're going back into that place. And it it is really hard. Like, mm, um, terrifying. My second pregnancy after the first loss, I was like, I'm gonna lose this baby, and I, and I did. Mm. Um, I don't think it's because I thought that. No, of course not. Some women do, but I'm like, no. Um, I just think my body wasn't ready. There was something wrong, you know, um, just like there was something wrong, obviously, with that first loss. Yeah. And, and yeah, I was just like, I'm going to lose it. But but then I got the pregnant again. I was like, right, I'm going to enjoy this as much as I can because mm. I'm just going to love this baby as, as long as I have it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Rather than being yeah. miserable the whole time. But it is, it's hard. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know how the, how women do multiple pregnancies like after loss like because I've talked to some women where they're like they had lost then they had pregnancy then they had lost then they had pregnancy and I'm just like I don't that's so much like Mm. to to handle um so traumatic you also want to give your kid like a sibling yeah so then it's yeah it's like a toss-up it's so annoying (laughs) Yeah, that's what my husband keeps saying. You know, you want to give Tilly a living um, sibling. And I'm like, yeah, I do. But I also want to be sane for the process. Like, I, I don't want to go temporarily insane again. Like, as I said before, with when I had when I was pregnant with Tilly, we didn't have any other living children. So it was just me and my thoughts and, and my husband who I could annoy the shit out of. But now, <laughs> but now, <laughs> yeah. But now Tilly, she's, she watches everything I do. She feels what I feel. She, like she takes it on. Like I know she does. I don't want to put her through a negative. Like I'm not saying it's going to be negative, but I can guarantee I'm going to be anxious. Yeah. Um. Hopefully it turns out to have, you know, a living baby. But that's nine, ten months of of absolute uh, hell. It's going to be hell. Yeah, I can tell you my kids definitely feel it. Like mm-hmm. you, can, you can tell like they're more like on edge like more so recently because I've been more on edge recently yeah um and I think it's you know in some ways I think it's a good thing because it's like a character building thing like they can see how important their their sibling is and then they also see how important they are to me because Mm. they're seeing how much I love and how much yeah their baby like this baby um their baby sister you know so I think it can be really beautiful you know so even yeah, though can, yeah. it's horrible like to 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 think of your child having to go through it with you like it could be a really beautiful experience as well like and if you mm-hmm. if you do have the baby fantastic like then they have a sibling it's amazing but if you do lose then they that's another experience that yes they have to go through but then they understand it and they have that understanding and that experience like i've heard i've mm-hmm. spoken to some women where they said their mum lost when they were a kid and so they understood Mm. and when it happened to them they were more prepared because they knew what it was and they understood the process and they didn't feel as guilty and as silly and all those emotions that we all feel yeah because they had experienced it through their mother I'm not Mm. saying that that's you know the ideal obviously that's awful and terrible and I hope that never happens to anybody um but at the same time, like all of these things that we go through, like we go through ups and downs all the time in life. And, and they, yes, they're watching us and they're learning from us. Um, but there is some, again, beauty in the horrible things yeah. um, because they learn and then they, they become these stronger people and they see how much you love and they see how much you give and they see how much compassion you have. Like, I'm sure she's see like your daughter is going to see if she, whether she sees it now or sees it later but the stuff that you're doing right now where you're talking to women and you're you're being there and you're making like a whole sort of almost community 
you know, and building mm. women up, that she's going to see that. Mm. And that that is going to strengthen her, you know. So, I hope so. Oh, yeah, it and will. same for your kids. And same for your kids. Yeah, it's beautiful. You know? So all these things, you know, it's amazing. And I've got a seven-year-old and he's like, oh, did you? who did you talk to today? And I'll tell uh, him, talk to this lady and she went through this. And, and he's mm-hmm. like, that's really horrible. Does she have any children? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, she has one. Or no, she doesn't have any. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, that's horrible. Or if she has one, he's like, that's great. <laughs> you know, he gets so excited. So compassionate. That's beautiful. Yeah, and and I think all these, you know, these life experiences do touch them, and 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 yeah. So it's funny, it's crazy you say that because I've got a photo of Chase in the house, and I've got all this stuff in like on a stand, and she gravitates to it. I I've never like, encouraged it, like I've never been like, oh here, come play with this, or come. Like I've never done that. I've kind of just left it as is, and she goes to them every day. She'll grab his photo and she'll kiss him, or she, there's another one of his hand, um, like knuckling with his dad's hand. She always grabs it and like holds it. Um, I'm like, I don't know how you know this. It's like she's got this connection with him, and I have not, I have not forced that at all. Like that should happen naturally. So I feel like they've got a connection without completely irrelevant to me. Um, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful to watch. I'm like, you're not even one and a half. How do you know? Like, I'm like, oh, where's Chase? And she'll go grab him. I'm like, I don't know how you know that. That's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I honestly think that they've just form some sort of connection I mean as if, as I said I believe she's here because of him so I don't know maybe she knows it I don't know it's crazy yeah set, sent to comfort and yeah yeah no that's beautiful that's so cute that she does that <sighs> I know I can't like it shocks me every time because it's as I said it's not something that I've, I've I have now like I'm like oh you know where's Chase I'll encourage it now but I never did it at the beginning like, I don't even know how she knew that that was his stand or anything but anyway yeah it's crazy <laughs> yeah they well they've taken a lot of what we do and how we act and you know and yeah must have just heard you talk about Jason yeah probably yeah it's really beautiful that she does that really really cute yeah well thank you so much for having me today thank you thank you so much for joining me and and telling your story and uh, yeah being I've a- never I've never really done it like I've had other people and I've had other people talk about their story but I've never actually really kind of dived into my story on a lot on a live so yeah I appreciate you having me thank you I hope I did okay <laughs> yeah and it, it can be quite mo- emotional hey um oh yeah. I didn't expect to cry like that not at all um well this this actually isn't a live we, we have um these are pre-recorded um yeah. interviews in, a, in a library but we are going to be doing live sessions that you can jump on um on those event days and the event days are just where you're just going to chat about different things and different topics and and really get into it so if you want to join you can um yeah, sure but yeah thank you so much and yes yeah, you did great thank you oh great thank you and there were you know, running tears, but yeah. I mean, I've cried in the last I don't know how many I've lost count how many you've cried in now <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great though like that's our authentic story and um yeah obviously we both could feel it and that's why we both cried and um yeah it's because it's sad and I think we need to acknowledge that I think it's good that we cry when we need to um because yeah it's it is it is devastatingly life-changing yeah yeah I've given in to the tears because I think it's fair it's therapeutic you know you cry about it if anyone's crying with us it's fine we're allowed to cry bonus points (laughs) yeah and you're pregnant too, so it's yeah. totally unexpected. <laughs> Lots of hormones, yeah, all the time, just like crying about everything. But yeah, um, yeah thank you, thank you so much. Thank have you. A- I hope you have a good day. Bye. See ya. Please note that all speakers, including experts and professionals, express information, views and opinions that should not be used to diagnose, treat, cure or prevent any medical conditions. If you have a medical issue, please consult a qualified professional. Speakers voice their own views, opinions and conclusions, and they may not reflect the views, opinions and conclusions of other speakers. Ella Rose, The Joy of Sunflowers and its sponsors may not endorse all or any of the views, opinions or conclusions expressed.